Hey and welcome. Uh, today we're just going to have a look at how we can simply add a watch list, create a simple, you know, watch list that will allow us to perform queries, you know, um, that are sort of, you know, custom in a way. For instance, if you were to receive a list of usernames from a client and they wanted you to run that against, um, you know, the Azure data that you have, only a select few of users and, you know, you didn't have a lot of time, you want to, to search through them rather quickly, um, having a a watch list would be ideal. You know, they could just send you the list and you can simply create a CSV um, and then add it in the watch list and boom, just like that. And the cool thing is you can even add, you know, information to that CSV or to the watch list later on. Just, you just have to keep updating it all the time. You know, instead of, you know, changing analytic rules and building complex queries, whereas you could, you know, just use the watch list to run it against data and vice versa. But anyway, the Sentinel watch lists enable the collection of data from external data sources for correlation with the events in your Azure Sentinel environment. And once created, you can use watch lists in your search, detection rules, threat hunting, and responsible playbooks. Watch lists are stored in your Azure Sentinel workspace as much as name value pairs and are cached for optimal query performance and low latency. Well, so that's basically what I said, just a bit more complex. <laughs> Let's get straight into it. So if we look on the left-hand side over here, you know, from the main overview screen in the left, you'll be able to see that there is a subsection for watch list. You can go ahead and click on that. Um, cool. So here's, you know, a brief explainer about watch list is and what you can do with watch lists. Um, you can, you know, have your time reading that. There's also a, a screen over here for templates that can allow you to create custom watch lists based on the templates that they have over here. What we are going to do is just build one straight from our very own CSV, you know, which I'm easily going to show you how to make. So, okay, cool. Let's click on add new. All right. And then you can put the name of the watch list. So I'm just going to be put it plug IT users. All right. Um, and I'm just going to say users of plug IT domain. All right. And the watch list, I'm just going to call it plug. Well, plug IT users. All right, cool. And then, you know, this is the important part because this is what the uh, variable that you're going to be using to query. So let's click on next. All right, cool. Now you see, you know, the type of file. Well, currently we can only select the CSV, you know, which is okay. Um, you don't have to worry about the number of lines below, you know, uh, before the row with headings because, you know, we're going to have a simple CSV just with you know, just one, you know, row for headings and then below that the data is going to be in there. Um, cool, this, let's have a quick look at the CSV. You see, I built this from um, the, the for using Notepad, you know, and then just saving the extension as a .csv. So you can see I've got the, you know, one heading. That's the username and the next, of course, is the email address. So it's basically the name and the corresponding email address, of course. You see, I've got the comma just after the, you know, the first heading, which is the username. No comma there after the second heading, which is email. Then I'll move on to the next line and so forth. All right. So let's just say I wanted to add a different one. You know, um, we can say reception, um, comma, and then reception's email address. Reception at plug it. Whoops. Reception at plug it.com. Cool. Then we'll just go ahead and save this. If you're not sure on how to save it as a CSV, just you know save as and then make sure that you type in uh, you know .csv at the end. All right, cool. So I've no way I've saved that too. I'm going to upload that CSV file over here. All right, cool. So there we go. Um, I'm just going to use the you know plug email CSV. Cool. So you can see that it uploaded successfully. Uh, a tip, just try to keep these things simple as possible because I noticed that this can be quite finicky. So the more simpler you can keep it, the better. You know, it allows for you to, uh, you know, search, of course, better. The search key field, you know, we could you could either leave that, uh, you know, on username. Um, yeah, because that's, of course, the first and heading. Um, cool. Let's just go ahead and click on review and create. All right. Remember, the this is uh, watch list aliases plug IT users. All right, we're going to click on create. We'll just wait for it a bit. Cool, and it looks like it was deployed successfully. Oh, cool. So let's just go and have a look and see how we can query that. Now, while you're querying it, I want you to think of this in a way as if, you know, this was another table as well. Just as you've got, you know, your Azure activity, your sign-in logs, your 
as your monitor logs and so forth. Cool, so let's just go ahead and see if we can query that watch list. You know, you can simply just go to the space where you can type in any queries, you know, so get watch list and then type in the uh, the, the alias of the, the, the watch list that we had was plug IT users. Remember to put them in that type of quotation marks. Great, get watch list. And there you can see you've got the list of users, the admin, user, reception, plug, all of them over there with the email addresses. So think of you know how you can use this to query whatever data and you know that you want to constantly upload and so forth. Well, if you wanted to add to it, you know you could just simply go back to your CSV that you had, you know, and add in and just talk like maybe user one and uh, yeah, we'll just say user one at plugit.com. Um, yeah, let's and we'll save that All right, once again. So I'm going to go back over here. You know, we can simply just uh, delete this, right? So, you know, I'm deleting it and adding the updated version again. So, yeah, if, if it comes to, you know, where I've set analytic rules or playbooks or anything, you know, then I don't have to go through that motion of like, uh, of, of, of completely just, you know, of resetting and changing all of the uh, playbooks and analytic rules. I can simply just go ahead and... Yeah, I could simply just, you know, update the watch list and uh, that will, yeah, allow me to update, of course, you know, with ease, you know. Um, yeah, let's see, plug IT watch list. Uh, we'll just call, don't have to worry about that. And we'll just call this once again, plug IT users, of course, you know, because I don't want that to change. So the alias is going to be the same. Next, the source. And of course, we'll update this with, yep, what we've just saved. Um, search key field, we'll just leave that on the username, review and create, create, and done, there we go, once again, updated, it's there, you know, well, you know, that's pretty much it, but yeah, think about all the different ways that you can actually um, create, you know, uh, well, what you could use the watch list for, it's ideal, you know, for when troubleshooting, for when you've got a list of users or emails or variables, anything that you want to include. Yeah, if you like this video, uh, leave us a like. Peace.